deliver consistent high pure carbohydrate food. It's great to have you back on with the news on the decision to test Bulba's potential production from the Kion and with the production update on the recently acquired assets in Canada. Um, I'd like to turn it first to Bulba if I can. I'm sure this has caught a few investors by surprise. So can you take us through your decision here to pull up before drilling the lower zones and, and the rationale for testing the Kion only? Sure. Um, it wasn't just the investors that were taken by surprise. I think we were very surprised by the, the log results as well. But uh, as, as background, um, we're drilling and drilling very slowly uh, subsequent to the last release we made to the market. And uh, we were getting more concerned, you know, that extended time drilling was putting at risk what we'd already uh, thought we had behind uh, in the wellbore, in the open wellbore. So, you know, we thought we had a good zone in the uh, window and uh, other interesting zones uh, all the way down to the 8,800 feet or so that we were at. So we, we made the decision to run what we call an intermediate set of logs and to assess what we had and and then multi, multiple outcomes from that, we can assess, you know, what's the best way to go forward? Should we stop and and uh, run pipe over the existing good zones that we had if they were uh, were, were confirmed by the uh, logs uh, or uh, or any num- a number of other alternatives and, and how better to drill the, the, the remainder of the well. So we're, we're about 900 feet short of, of TD and uh, so... You know, that was the decision we made. Um, you know, sometimes we just got to be pragmatic. So we made the decision to run the logs. We, we got the logs and we were, we were disappointed by, you know, the, the quality of the uh, potential reservoirs in the Gwinda. You know, we ended up with estimate maybe 10 feet of, of pay in the, in the Gwinda and a few feet of pay in, in uh, two, cup, two or three other zones. So, you know, what looked pretty good on, on uh, mud logs uh, didn't look so good in the hard light of day with physical logs in front of us. So we, we then assessed that and said, well, we're not sure how we can drill that much faster going forward. Uh, we had a couple of uh, tricks up our sleeves, but uh, which, which we could use. But when we, when we ran the synthetic seismic, we decided that the events that we were see, already seen uh, were representative of what we had ahead of us. And they, you know, the, the events were representing you know, hard streaks or, or a combination of hard streaks and uh, silty zones. With, that were saturated with gas. And uh, that's what we thought we probably had. Well, well, we're pretty certain that's what we had ahead of us. So we made a decision at that point to plug the lower part of the well up back up to the casing uh, shoe and to uh, then resort to uh, testing the uh, Kion, the 92 feet, 137 feet, feet potential uh, pay in the Kion that was already safe behind the 9 and 5 eighths inch casing. Okay, so you've reported 90 feet feet of pay in the Kion and, and some good flow rates from one offset well. And and I guess the fact that this is a productive and proven formation in the Sacramento Basin, it's something else that we need to take into consideration here. Can you take us through the next steps, the likely time frames, and what else can you tell us about the Kion in California? Well, last, first, the Kion has been a very, very good producer in the northern part of the Sacramento Basin. Um, many, many wells um, produce from the Kion and produce at good rates. Uh, it's not just one offset well that produces good rates uh, from the Kion. There are two or three wells within the uh, Ord Bend uh, field that produce good rates from the Kion. So um, there are some, some good examples there, and uh, that's what we're hoping for out of this. You know, And if we get a good flow rate, Right, uh, you know the chances are that we'll get a you know good, good amount of production out of this and and get our money back for this well times over, uh, multiple times over. So so that's what you know that what we want to do, and um, and then you know. We'll assess, you know, where do we go from there? You always reassess after you've got results, and and every well leads to new ideas and, and new opportunities. I suppose, Alex, you know, the, the timing, you've know, got the, the big rig off site um, and then bring a, a small workover rig on, uh, we could be testing within three weeks is, is the current plan. 
So following production testing of this well, regardless of the result, where to next for Sagasco in California? And how has this result shaped your forward plans? Obviously, it means that we won't be uh, rushing out to drill any uh, development wells uh, on the deeper sands that we're hoping for at Borba. So, you know, that means that we'll focus uh, on the production and increasing the production. You know, after all, we only explore, you know, as, as a means to increasing production anyhow. Uh, so we'll take the data we've got here we, you know, from this well. We'll integrate it into uh, the uh, information we already have and know about the basin. We will uh, you know, look at the production and enhancement opportunities that we have in our portfolio. We, we are doing some other exciting things that I'll uh, let shareholders know about uh, once uh, they're coming to fruition uh, in the basin uh, to assess the potential. And, uh, and then you know, we'll, we'll reassess uh, what, what, how best to go about adding the production beyond what the portfolio already has in and the opportunities that, uh, that are there in front of us. So Gary, sort of reading between the lines, it seems the focus is now very much about building cash flows and you now have a portfolio of assets to do this. Uh, it, it seems that the Alberta Plains assets are now throwing off some good cash. Can you take us through the potential for these leases, their upside and, and that of Red Earth as well? Sure. Yes, we, we, we want to build a company that's sustainable and one that, that we don't have to come back out to shareholders every time we want to do uh, a significant event. So uh, that's why we're trying to build production. We'll try and build on production in California, but uh, uh, Canada is providing uh, very low cost opportunities at the moment. And, and uh, we've had ownership of the Alberta Plains assets now for uh, you know, a month or so, and uh, they're on target. When we announced the acquisition, I think we were doing roughly 100 barrels a day gross. Uh, we said we we're aiming for 500 through restorations. We're, we're now doing over 600 gross uh, barrels of oil equivalent a day. Um, we're looking to add in, in 300 barrel a day type uh, tranches uh, to that asset. In the meantime, uh, then the March, we added the uh, closed on the Red Earth acquisition. That added a thousand barrels a day gross, uh, 300 barrels a day, uh, a little over uh, to Sagasco. And uh, so all up, we're doing 420 or so barrels a day. Um, and that's, yeah, that's good cash flow. You know, if, if that was uh, netting you know, $20 Aussie a barrel uh, free cash flow over and above uh, lease operating costs, you know, that's. Uh, I think $3 million or more a year in, in cash flow. You know, so, you know, that then provides the opportunities to do other things. And just finally, Gary, I understand Blue Sky have introduced two solid transactions. Do you have your plate full or are you assessing more assets with them? Yes, we are assessing more assets with them. Um, you know, they're, they're a good operator. They know how to uh, sniff out good deals uh, and they know how to uh, change the lease operating statements so that they go from being marginal to uh, good cash flow producers. And so, you know, we, we want to partner up with them to look at more. We, we have other assets in our sites and, uh, you know, we, we hope, look forward to letting shareholders know about those uh, in, in the near term. We're already a significant producer on the ASX, uh, moving up the producing. Uh, there's not that many producers on the ASX, and we're moving up that the scale of those uh, very quickly. And and we'd we'd hope to do that again. We also know what other assets we'd like to have uh, ownership of because we can see opportunities to change them in our own right, uh, in our own backyard uh, as operator. And uh, so we'd love, love to move those forward and, and are actively looking at ways of moving those forward as well. Thanks, Gary. Really interesting chat and obviously a, a slight shift in focus, but uh, sagasco has got plenty on its plate and um, I think it's still all systems go moving forward. So thanks very much for joining me and uh, all the best. Thank you, Alex. I appreciate the opportunity again.